May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be always acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. I remember back in the day that there was an expression going around uh, that went something like this. Why pray when you can worry? And I would say, what? What do you mean? Why pray when you can worry? It, it baffled me because I was one that did pray. So I would say, why worry when you can pray? Well, it was explained to me that even though we do pray, when we are hit with a pretty difficult circumstance, then we might be just held frozen in our tracks and we can't do anything but worry, bite our fingernails, and shrink at the thought of our struggle. In another parlance, it's called being overwhelmed. And haven't we been overwhelmed lately? In Paul's letter to the Philippians today, the scripture reads, Do not worry about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. And believe me, when we do, the Lord is near to us, and the peace of God that passes all understanding will guard our hearts and our minds. And Paul also reminds us to surround ourselves with positivity, trust in the ways of life that are honorable, the ways of life that are pure, the ways of life that are true, that are clear, that are pleasing, that are commendable, the ways of life that are just and right. Strive for excellent, Paul says, and the ways of life that are worthy of praise. This is called living in the peace of God. As the psalmist says, this way of life is more to be desired than gold, even much fine gold, sweeter also than honey, than honey from the comb. Believe me that when we do follow these ways of life, then I believe our, our eyes, our hearts, and our minds will be wide open to see the glory of the Lord that is always before us. Now, did I say glory? Yes, the glory. Oh, how I love the glory. And I would that all would see the glory, would that we were all looking for the glory, but sometimes we're not. To whom shall you compare me, says the Holy One? Who is my equal, says the Lord? And the answer is, lift up your eyes on high and see. You know, sometimes in the midst of our worry, when we are overwhelmed with our circumstance, it is very hard for us to look up because we have our noses to the grindstone and our gaze is all around us, but only looking down. Maybe looking down in shame, looking down in embarrassment, looking down in fear, lest we catch the eye of someone who we are sure is judging us. Look up, my friends. Look up. Believe me, when you do, you will see amazing things that will want to make your heart sing. Make your face beam with the vision of God's glory. Even as I write this, I'm looking up at the office church calendar for the month of June, and there it is, the glory. A picture of beautiful stratus nimbus clouds in the sky behind uh, church. We can find the glory in art. I have a beautiful sculpture called the flautist reaching to the sky and as I see it with a melody from heaven. We can find the glory in music. And for me, besides all of the great sacred music at our disposal, there is one of my favorite composers and singers, Barry Manilow. <laughs> yeah, I know. No groans, please, but I do love him. We can find the glory, of course, in nature. 
And boy, oh boy, are there ever a lot of choices here. We find it in the rolling waves of the Georgian Bay, the pink hues of the glorious sunrise or the fiery reds of a gorgeous sunset, the crisp white blanket of freshly fallen snow and in the myriad colors of a fresh spring garden. Yes, my friends, the glory of God in nature. The list is endless, so just take your pick. And when you see it, just say to yourself, now that's the glory. Today is being recognized as the National Indigenous Day of Prayer. And believe me, that our native brothers and sisters have no problem seeing the glory of God in nature and to connect as one with the environment, earth, wind, water, fire. I think that it's probably the hardest thing to see the glory in other people, in one another, because of the baggage that we sometimes bring to our relationships. But when we see it, it is indeed beautiful. Funny, isn't it, that the same people that can bring us our greatest heartaches in life are also the ones who can become the source of our greatest joy. Yes, you know, I am talking about our families. Where would we ever be without them? Look for the glory in the eyes of the very people who live under the same roof. And as I look for the glory of Christ in others, my prayer is that others may be able to see the light and the glory of Christ in me. Indeed, the light of God has never been better expressed as it is in the light of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And the word, John says, became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have beheld his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. In the glory that we see in Jesus, we become enwrapped in the vision of what it might be like to possess our own superpower. We have seen love, compassion, forgiveness, and sacrifice in action as we hear the words of the one who is nailed to a cross and pleads to the heavens, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. We have seen love and inclusion and acceptance in arms that reach out in welcome. Suffer the little children to come unto me. We see the glory of our Lord who heals the brokenhearted, who eats with the outcast and sinner and gives sight to the spiritually blind. When we see this glory, we try to emulate the glory as we love our neighbors as ourselves. At least I hope we do. As we seek justice for every creature on earth and as we respect the dignity of every human being. Believe me when I say that we are called to walk in the ways of an everlasting God who does not grow faint or weary of us and who has plenty of understanding for us, especially when we stray. He has enough strength to spare, even when our youth is spent and we tire in the race and feel absolutely exhausted. So here is the power of the glory. Those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength they shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. This is the promise of the glory of God. Those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Help us, Lord, help us, Lord, in your name. Amen.
Amen.